TCI is brought to you by Spendthrift Farm Stallion Temple City. Dynaformer's best son at stud with 152 year olds in 2018. His biggest and most exciting crop to date. Welcome back to TCI, your inside track to the Triple Crown alongside Joel Cunningham. I'm John Siegel. Well, Joel, we're talking about the Preakness this week. You know, it looks like we're going to have four horses returning from the Derby, but we're also going to have four new shooters who will be coming into the race. Tell me a little bit about the, the horses that are going to be in here. Yeah, so we're going to have probably a field of eight. I mean, we're shooting the show on Tuesday in advance of traveling, uh, going to the Preakness Stakes, obviously, John. Uh, so we don't have the field set, but I think we have a pretty good idea of the probable. So we're going to get an early jump on it. Like you mentioned, four horses returning from the Derby. You obviously have your Derby winner, Justify. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have Lone Sailor for Tom Amos, thought he ran well enough in the slop, they're going to give it a shot. Bravazzo, same thing, Lucas having two in here. Uh, and Good Magic, your runner-up, Chad Brown talking about how he came out of the race in good order, willing to take that shot back on two weeks to see if they can get a classic for Good Magic. And then a few new shoot shooters, I mentioned Lucas, Sporting Chance, hmm. of course we've always liked in here. I thought it was a sneaky, uh, good performance out of him in the Pat Day Mile when you consider and how that, that was a pretty good field for a grade three, how he ran against that field provided that he had, a, I thought, a tough trip in there and was not on the best part of the racetrack. He's a colt that, again, he's always been his own worst enemy. Can he put it together mentally? I thought he ran a lot better in the Pat Day Mile in terms of, you know, swapping his leads and running a straight path, responding to the rider in the stretch in that race as opposed to what we've seen the antics in the past, like the hopeful and, and obviously the bluegrass stakes. So if he can keep his mind on his business, and obviously uh, respond to the rider as needed in the Preakness. He's a sneaky long shot in here, in my opinion, that has a quality to belong in this field. And then Quip, your Arkansas Derby runner-up. Mm -hmm. You know, they talked about how that race did take quite a bit out of him, and he was soundly defeated after a pretty good trip in there. But he's your Tampa Bay Derby winner. Speed typically plays at Pimlico. So I think he's a pretty good addition to this field from a quality standpoint, Quip. And then you have a local horse, Diamond King, and then Tenfold. Another horse that showed a pretty solid middle move to get in contention at the top of the stretch in the Arkansas Derby. Uh, Well-bred uh, son of Curlin. Um, has some promise in terms of how he broke his maiden, but he just hasn't come along to be at the top of this uh, group yet. We'll see if Tenfold in the short field can maybe punch through now out of the Arkansas Derby to where I thought he looked like he wasn't quite ready for the big show in that race. So only four horses returned from the Derby. You know, I think weather is probably playing a factor in some of those horses who have defected from this race because no we're doubt. predicting rain again. Do you think that's the same thing? Yeah, and it's funny. We're talking about this show on, you know, Tuesday leading up. And we already know there's going to be rain. Unlike the Derby, when you know we thought we were you're going to get clear skies and weather wasn't even worth talking about. Obviously, it was the biggest storyline. Preakness, I think we know we're going to get rain, and that ran off some horses in here. Now, I don't think you're ever going to get a big field mm -hmm. uh, in this race unless Justify were to come up with you know some signs with the foot bruise being an issue. I mean, you saw a lot of people really paying attention to Justify. I think how he was doing was going to dictate this field size. But realistically, if he was coming up to this race and the connections uh, were confident like Baffert is, he's been back training now for a few days and, and looks solid by all accounts from Churchill Downs and certainly the, the video I've seen of him. He's still, you know, is a little uh, rougher warming up the first go round, but smooth as silk, I think, the second go round. So Justify, you know, that's, that's what we saw before coming in the Derby. And I've had, heard reports of that in California too. And all the horse does is keep winning and doing so impressively. So no reason to think Justify is not coming in this race the right way for yeah. master trainer Bob Baffert as the horse to be. And that really limited the field size in here. And I think one horse that was the biggest defection, a horse that was number two in our TCI top 10 last week, as the potential for this race. Because look, before I say his name, I really thought there were two scenarios in the Derby. Like I said, there's a key to that race. If nobody tackled Justify at some point down the end of the backstretch, I felt he was the best horse he was going to run away with. Right. That's what happened. Now the track wound up being a little different than we thought. Um, you know, uh, maybe the race would have been run different on a dry track. But I thought the only horse that could really beat him, in my opinion, when I sort of evaluated this, was Bolt Oro. He obviously ran horribly over the sloppy track. Because of rain being in the forecast this week, they've, they've chosen to bypass the Preakness. They don't want to ship him running back in two weeks over a track that he showed uh, a couple weeks ago he did not like at Churchill. Yeah, and I mean, the horse obviously looked like he was doing well. He's training well. Good Magic looks like he's training extremely well. He's the horse who ran second in the Derby. You know, it was interesting to hear Chad kind of talk about this horse and what he thinks has to happen in the Preakness. Do you think Good Magic has a chance to beat Justify? You know, I, I don't think so. I mean, I said that going in the Derby that, 
you know, I thought really if Justify fired his race and they left him alone long enough and didn't create too much of a meltdown scenario and he was able to c control things in the clear. Again, the speed didn't bother me in terms of the pace because you never know what the track's playing. So when they went 45 and change and I saw him where I expected him to be, I was not concerned about Justify fi uh, firing despite that uh, quote unquote fast opening half mile. Now they came home in 26 and four and I know Tom Amos made a lot of that final quarter being one of the slowest you know, along with Super Saver in recent memory in the right. Kentucky Derby. But remember, both those, both of those final quarter mile times, the final quarter mile of the Derby's been slow in a lot of years. Doesn't mean they're bad horses. I think a lot of times it's attributed to the track. I mean, who knows what to make of that track at Churchill. When it gets like that, it's taking rain all day. Even Super Saver's year when he came up the rail and won, you know, just because the final quarter mile was slow doesn't necessarily mean that's a sign of weakness per se. Justify, I think we know what he is in here. Um, and he still ran pretty well in that race, even to get like a 103 buyer. I thought it was a little light. I was expecting it to be a 105 plus to win this year's Kentucky Derby. Anytime you get off track like that, I thought it was a solid enough performance. So uh, coming back in here, John, yeah, I mean, you're going to get you know, a field aid in here. And the one thing that's interesting to me, you mentioned good at good magic. He's out of Curlin. He's mm -hmm. out of, uh, he's by Curlin. He's out of a hard spun mare, big wet track number. And he showed at Churchill, he handled the wet track. Yeah. So if we think we're going to get a sloppy surface this week, I think there's four contenders in here that are worth watching in the race. Justify being the horse to beat. And then three other horses, good magic, runner up in the Derby, loves a sloppy trap, quip, tactically placed horse, comes in as the fresh horse now, uh, having you know five weeks up to the race and a little rest to bounce back out of the Arkansas Derby. We know he has some quality in that tactical, I think you want a tactical horse at Pimlico. And again, distorted humor, he's another horse that should handle a wet track. And sporting chance, John, horse that I thought ran pretty well in the Pat Day Mile, like I said, sneaky good performance there, stretching back out around two turns. He's at a tiz now, which is the relaunch line, is, yeah. is who he's by. And he's another cult that you look at that female family, Candy Ride, that Fapiano line on the female side. So again, a lot of wet track pedigree there as well, and he's already run over it. So between those four horses, I think where this race is gonna be decided. All right, before you tell me who you think's gonna win this year's Preakness, tell me just a little bit about the track, because we know Churchill, when it gets wet, it can play peanut butter, it can play a lot of different ways. Is what, What's the Pimlico surface like whenever you're expecting rain? Well, like I said, normally speed is usually a weapon at Pimlico. I would expect that to be the same case. Now, again, pace makes the race. I think the key to this race is the same key that I mentioned two weeks ago going in the Kentucky Derby. It's at what point do the riders decide to go after Justify and, and really throw a challenge to him that's going to dictate Mike Smith maybe having to do something a little earlier than he would have liked to, maybe take Justify out of his comfort zone. Because one thing about this Colt, Ever since, you know, and the good horses do this, that's tactical like him, they put them, the riders in a good spot. He did that in the Derby, broke yep. well, put Mike into a good spot, yep. and the horse's talent carried on from there. Well, he's never been in an uncomfortable spot. We all remember, you know, years where you had a one to five shot like this, you know, Smarty Jones comes to mind, a tactical horse that he was no question the horse to beat. And what they do in the Belmont Stakes, they went after him at different points. I remember Jerry Bailey went after him, I think with Eddington. You saw people take shots at him during the race and it softening, softened him up enough for Birdstone to win. Well, it's the same thing here, pace makes the race. So regardless of how that track's playing, which is really tough to predict, it's at what point you know, is good magic. The rider going to look up Quip, which, you know, Quip, again, being that that's Team Windstar, you wouldn't expect them to throw a challenge to justify. I think they're going to ride Quip as if he's just in it to win his own race and not really worry about justify. But even Sporting Chance, another tactical horse in here, at what point, you know, particularly good magic, do they decide to go after justify in here? Yeah. And how does that adversely maybe affect justify's finish if he's if he faces little, uh, a little oppositional early in the race, a little adversity to try to have to fend off and finish down the stretch. To me, that's, the, that's no question the key to the race. I expect Justify to win this race, but I do think there's a sneaky long shot in here, and I do think it's sporting chance, John. A horse we've been high on all along. He debuted in the top five of my TCI top 10. Yep. They rushed him into the Arkansas Trail. He just never looked like he um, was properly prepared for the timing of that when you look at his works and he was running tough race after tough race. Bluegrass Stakes, I think he good chance he could have been second in that race. Maybe could even made a run at Good Magic in there had he run a straight path. 
So now coming back off a sneaky good performance of Pat Day Mile again, a horse that should appreciate the wet track. To me, he is the horse. And look, Wayne Lucas off of two weeks rest, he's had success. We think about oh, yeah. the Oxbow and horses like that that were outsiders. He's had success in the Preakness Stakes. So again, Sporting Chance to me is that outsider in here um, that may be a little bit of a price. I don't think he can beat Justify. Justify is going to have to be beaten in terms of you know when they go after him, but a benefactor in here, if you're looking for a long shot, I think sporting chance, but let's be honest, John, we're talking about a one to five shot, we're talking about Baffert almost has a perfect record coming back in the Preakness with his Derby winners, and this is a really good one. I expect Justify to win and head to New York three weeks from now with a shot at the Triple Crown. All right, thank you, Joel. Yep. Thank you guys for watching. Come back next week, we'll recap the Preakness, and we'll see if we have a Triple Crown on the line.